Welcome to Doshta! Hi, I'm Ramajin. Today is the 30th of September and our new guest for the shit talk is Pino Gris. Let's -a go! You may want to wait a moment. I told you how the plane goes. <laughs> The what? What's the topic today? Um, the topic of today. I found an audio book where Jules earns twenty thousand leagues under no twenty thousand leagues under the seas. Yeah, and so I fell asleep while listening to it, and had very very strange dreams. Like very, very strange dreams. And and then I woke up and we listened to it. And uh dreams were about the same as the book, just much more embellished. Like a bunch of scenes got blended together. So the I mean the main plot is there's this this man who has started to hate um colonialization and all of the bad stuff he sees happening in the world and wars and stuff so he builds a submarine and him and his cult go into the submarine and sail under the oceans and stuff so he just doesn't want to live on land anymore and then um somehow the main characters get stuck on the boat with him as his guests and prisoners right but you told and, me you, you dreamt of squids yeah, I'll get so the boat he um he powers well I dreamt of the squid scene. The squid scene is actually not that impressive in the book. I mean I guess that's kind of neat. Um they they run into the squid someplace in the Atlantic Ocean and um the squid seeing this long black thing that they think is kind of a threat to their territory come to chase the submarine off and one of them gets caught in the propeller so they have to go out and fight away the squid so that they can chop the one off of the propeller and keep going and you know so it's, it's kind of a it's a you know his idea of the squid is very fantastic it's not like um yeah it's not like a real squid i i think a real we eat yeah a big squid a... we are japanese <laughs> we eat as a or deep fried <laughs> or grilled mm -hmm. but well, can i in... ask you what my son, can i ask you what does it mean in the japanese culture dreaming of squids of course that's sexual desire yeah no, 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 no. <laughs> just, just in my dream, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. It was the squid, like, the squid lived in, like, this underwater squid city built into the side of a cliff on the, the deep trench in the ocean. And they had, like, their own religion and stuff, and so they came out to fight the boat because it was blasphemy. And that's, that's how it went in my dream. It wasn't. It's nothing like that. You're a little weird. Thank you. <laughs> Roman, Although please, this, this yeah, does give me your analysis of her strange dream about squid. Uh, I can't. Uh, I, I need. I. I. I need. I need more. More in output from your dreams. Yeah. This is just one. Well, it turns out that. Um, the weapon that they used mainly to kill the squid was an axe, and that can be used on you, so don't forget it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, so you, you killed the squids with the axe? They did, in the book, yeah. Ah, and what about you? You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a vegetarian, so I tend not to kill squid. And most squid are, for the most part, smaller than me, and also in the ocean. So we very rarely meet in the said, way where we're going to fight. You vegetarian, so that means you yeah. would drink the ink from from them. I guess I could drink the ink if I don't hurt the squid. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, to um, harvest, it's not like you know, if you harvest honey, 
it doesn't really hurt the bees. Like maybe every once in a while a bee gets stuck in the honey door or whatever and crushed, but or the door on the hive box. But if, if you try to get the ink out of a squid, that's a defense mechanism. So yeah. one, the squid's probably either angry or frightened. And two, I can't imagine a lot of ways you're going to get that without killing the squid as well. You know, it's not like they, well, they, they pick up the squid and shake him to get his ink out and throw him back into the ocean. <laughs> I, think, I think they probably cut the sack out and squish Don't stop. So, Pinagri. Pinagri. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the presidential debate? I haven't really watched the debate. I imagine it's probably a lot of... Um, a lot of the one guy talking over the other guy and probably some nasty comments going back to that. But I, I think like the real, so there's an idea among some of the political thinkers now that the, the main trouble that we see in the United States is that, you know, you have your surface layer of society and then you have all of the rules, the things you're supposed to do and the things you're not supposed to do on top. But underneath that, you have the opposite. So the things that you're supposed to do, even though they're forbidden, right? Like, everybody knows what the speed limit is, but you, nobody really drives exactly the speed limit. You drive a little bit over, and if the roads are clear and there's no traffic and you're driving exactly the speed limit you're considered to be kind of rude. Like, get out of the way, don't you know the rest of us are trying to go someplace? So, and then there are things you're invited to do, but the underlying rule is you don't do them, right? Um, we see this in the United States where people are allowed to carry their firearms. Like, uh, not uh, carry, carry here, meaning like keep them in the open, have them on them ready to use. And that's technically allowed, right? That's one of their rights. But it makes many people very uncomfortable and they panic. So even though you're allowed to do it, you're forbidden from doing it underneath. And so this idea is that the people who, that many of those rules have swapped places for a large sector of the society. And that's where you see all of the obscenity come out. And I don't mean the obscenity here just as like bad words. I mean the whole circumstance is obscene. You know, like even if the guy you think is the good guy is making cutting comments or just comments backward to the offender, the very circumstance in which he's doing that is obscene. So he himself is a player in the obscene moment. So it shows to me that there's a huge movement that's happened in American society, and we don't know what the ramifications are of that yet. How should we react to that as a VR <laughs> resident? As a VR resident, yeah. I think most people come here to ignore it. <laughs> that's, that's the main reaction of coming here, I, isn't it? That... uh. It's the virtual reality, not the real reality. Um, so it's it's. I have, I mean, if we went hamburger side, we could probably see some people reacting to it. But I think it would smell like French French fries, a large, super sized French fry. That makes Please sense. Give me your opinion about the presidential debate. As an Italian and as a German. Well, I, I, I watched. I watched the press. What the fuck? Oh. I watched the presidential debate this morning, and I wasn't thinking absolutely thinking that it was coming becoming a comedy, stand up comedy. It was actually funny to to see the way Biden was. Getting interrupted by Trump, so I, I was I had I just had fun watching it. It wasn't that I, I thought it was boring, but it was not. So uh, I was actually waiting for him to 
I don't know, to start fighting or just beat them each other up, but it didn't happen. Maybe for the next one, we'll... It's in two weeks. I think this is probably the old white guy version of having, like, a DJ fight. You know, where they're just... I'm the best at whatever it is we're doing. No, I'm the best and you suck. Uh, I mean, that's what I expect to find. I still haven't watched it, and I probably won't. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's lots of things I don't watch. I don't watch cows poop in the field. I think it's a similar category. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know they that... do it, but I don't go out of my way to find it. <laughs> Are you sure this episode is gonna be called Shit Talk? Because it doesn't uh, sound shit. It yeah. sounds more serious. Sorry, you guys picked the, the serious topics. Don't stop. I went go kart racing for the first time. And, um, you know, I race the simulator a little bit. But it's mm-hmm. it's a lot different when you're in the vehicle, feeling it move, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a it's a small track in a building. Um, mm-hmm. It takes only like twenty five seconds if you're a slow person, and like twenty three if you're reasonably fast. And then it was public, so it's um, it's all uh, a mixed group of people. So some people know how to race, some people barely know how to drive, some people probably don't even have their license yet. And, uh, you know, you can, I think maybe the carts go up to like um, 45 or 50 kph, so like 30 miles an hour at their maximum speed. So it can go pretty fast on the straight. And, I mean, there's only three rules to racing, right? Win it or Mm -hmm. bin it. Win in doubt, flat out. And no pain, no chicane. So basically, English. No, those are it's a French word, chicane. Ah, chicane. So like, if you have a long straightaway and people are gonna go too fast, like say there's a big dangerous turn at the end of the straight, you can put a little like a little zigzag in the in the straightaway and they have to slow down for that so then they won't be going as dangerously fast at the other end but uh some chicanes aren't very big they're just enough to make you slow down but some of them are very tight where you almost have to stop but when you do that you have to if you're racing you really throw your body side one way then the other way and you know there's not a lot of padding in a racing seat so you're going to feel it um when you get jerked around and then the rule of course you know they want to protect their vehicles so the, the, the like the main rule they give you is absolutely no body contact no running into each other and so of course i end up on top of another go-kart <laughs> the guy in front of me spun and the people behind me collided and it pushed my cart on top of the other cart so what did you what did, what did you get hurt? Uh I, I mostly got hurt on my hip and my shoulder and my leg. So everything that slammed into the side of the seat. <laughs> kind of this whole side of me has some bruises on it. <laughs> but my helmet stayed on, that was good news. <laughs> so it's you know, it's rain racing is dangerous. And if you apply health and safety logic to it, it's not really going to be a race anymore. So I guess if the idea of dying in multiple pieces inside of a burning box of twisted metal bothers you, don't get into a race car. Yeah. Seems pretty normal to me. Sounds dangerous to be with a German girlfriend. (laughs) Girlfriend, we need to talk. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video.